Hello everyone. Firstly, I'd like to clear up the rumours that are going around that I've been arrested. I haven't been arrested, folks. Um, I've just been going through a very, very uh, intense uh, few days. The last six days have been like nothing I've ever experienced. Um, and I've got a very, very important message to share with you today. I think this is the most important video that I've ever done, to be quite honest. Uh, many people are going to think I'm mad. Many people are going to think I'm crazy. They'll think I've lost the plot and whatever but it is what it is folks the truth is what the truth is and I'm here to tell you the truth um, right at the beginning here I'd like to put out the most sincere most heartfelt the most humble apology to anybody I've ever said a wrong word to anybody who I've ever uh, mistreated anybody who I've ever abused or you know, had any tirades against or anything like that online or in real life or anything folks I really am I'm, I'm very very sorry um, from the absolute bottom most depths of my soul. All I can do is apologize. Um, it's up to you to, you know, whether you want to accept that or not, but that's just the way it goes. You have my most humble apologies. Um, the information that I tell you today is going to be very difficult for a lot of people to listen to. A lot of people aren't going to want to hear it. Um, but all I can say is that you must listen to this information with your heart. It's the only way it will be truly heard. And I myself can confirm this information to be true because it's the only thing that uh, explains every aspect of my life. And it does. The experience that I've had in the last couple of days, it explains everything that, the thing that's happened to me in my whole life. It, it all makes sense now. And um, an important thing to remember as well is that through this, you know, like I said, a lot of people are going to be repelled by what I have to say. Um, as Bill Hicks once said, um, you know, when you tell the truth, you piss everybody off. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot of pissed off people. Um, but, you know, they've, they've tricked us on so many levels. It's, uh, it's profound when you look at it. But I'm here to tell you how to get through the next level. And it is actually the next level. You're going to, yeah. But here we go, folks. This is, this is the reality. Um, and also... Like I said, there's so many synchronicities, so many things I've done in my life that I didn't um, didn't know I was going to do. Even my name, um, Max Egan, uh, why I picked ch chose that name. I mean, I, it was because my, my my uncle Max died over the channel. I thought that was a good thing to honour his name, you know, because um, he he was a young man, like 19 years old. If you look him up, if you look up um, Maxwell Cotton, you'll find that he was actually quite a famous uh, flyer. Someone wrote a book about him once, which was amazing. That was my it was my uncle and that was my namesake. I named myself after my, my uncle, Maxwell Cotton, a young man who died in the, the war, one of the wars that the parasites run in, uh, in World War II, that particular one. And also Egan is my son's middle name. And everything I've done, I have done for my son. So that's why I came up with Max Egan. And there's a real significance in the fact that I, I chose that name, which I'll, I'll get to later. Just for the record, folks, I, ended, I intend to tell you my real name very soon but i'm not going to do it right now and when i do tell you you'll understand why i didn't tell you now but that's coming that's, that'll be part two because i do have one more video definitely to come but as i said folks i'm here to tell you the truth the absolute truth to the best of my knowledge and as i said it's, it's going to be an unpleasant truth for a lot of people but this is after all the truth movement isn't it so that's what I'm going to do so here goes folks you're living in an enclosed reality this earth is flat all weather is controlled there's a, a dome roof over the top everything the flat earth is saying well not everything but a lot of what the flat earthers are saying is absolutely true this is an enclosed environment and this earth the, where we're playing this playing field that we're on whether it's the earth but the playing field is flat. Um, I do not think that the Earth is a globe. Um, I think it's actually something quite different to what everybody everybody else thinks. But you know, it, I, I don't want to speculate with any of this. But one thing I can confirm, absolutely, is that the Earth is flat. Um, and all weather is controlled. Uh, obviously, I can't confirm the day I haven't been up there. And not only is the Earth flat, <clears throat> but what our home has been turned into is basically a theme park like Westworld. 
where you have uh, a parasitic influence that comes down and plays Westworld with real people. Um, when you look at the work of John Lash with the Archons, and I highly recommend that you read a, a passage by Carlos Castaneda called The Predator Mind, because this is exactly how it works. And I know that because I almost got my full coat of awareness back on Saturday night. And it's, it's, it's a long story, folks. I'm going to try to give it to you in a, in a way that's understandable. But like I said, you know, you'll probably think I'm crazy, but, but this is how the game works. You're in a game and you need to know how the game works so you can make it through the next level. And somebody needs to hear this information because as they tell you in the movies, they tell you everything in the movies. There can be only one. I can tell you what the, the movies are for. I can tell you what the truth movement's for. The truth movement was to weed out uh, the remnants of, of the last level. See, they play, they, when they conquer a world, they conquer it in levels. The first level was Hyperborea, and that's where the white people came from. Um, when Hyperborea was conquered and frozen over, they had an ice age. The people who escaped Hyperborea escaped into the next realm, which I, I believe to be the Atlantean age, which we are at the end of that age now. Um, through that age, that would have gone down to Tartaria, and they probably had cataclysms and, and mud floods and stuff along the way. Uh, the mud flood is absolutely correct. The um, guy from Mud Fossils University is absolutely correct in what he says. The guy from the No Forest on the Flat Earth, I would suggest, is absolutely correct in what he says. This was how they went down the levels, and each time they go down a level, the inhabitants get smaller and smaller and smaller. When they've done the level, um, all of the mining that they've done from that level, I would suggest um, they just, they, they don't need this stuff. It's, it's just, you know, all they're looking for is the crystals and the gold and the silver and the essence of, of this, this realm that we're in. So I think they take most of that stuff, they build the stuff we need out of it, and then they just save it all up. And then at the end of the level, they just dump it all in the ocean, or whenever they need a cataclysm or a tidal wave, they just dump a whole bunch of dirt in the ocean, and that creates the tidal wave. That's the earthquake that you hear. That's the big kapunk. When they dump all that soil back in the ocean, and it creates a, a, an earthquake, or a tidal, an earthquake and a tidal wave. And when they dump enough in there at the end of the level, the, the mud mixes with the salt water from the ocean and it floods the places. And as the Mud Fossil University guy says, you know, it covers people with, uh, with silt and sediment and the bones turn to stone. And then on the people in the next level, people after the cataclysm, dig these bodies up. They don't know their bodies. They dig them up and they build their homes out of them. So, you know, we're essentially living in, 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 a, in a tomb. You know, when you, when you look at when the internet came online, as I've said on my talks also, um, the Lucifer system. That's what it is, folks. It's the Lucifer system, the code that bears the light. And it's, the light is the awareness that it's stealing from you. See, the way the parasite works is that every time you have that aha moment, it steals that energy from you and it puts it online. And therefore you transfer that piece of consciousness into the virtual world and you lose that essence of your own awareness and becomes part of the machine. And that's how they steal all of your awareness. That's how it goes. Um, we have not really got any idea what virtual reality is and what it's doing and what it has done. Um, it's powered by our awareness. And why they created the truth movement was because at the end of each level, they distill that awareness down. They stage an event such as 9-11. They get someone like Alex Jones to go out there, who's probably a biological robot. You know, they get him to go out there and he, he creates the truth movement. And then anybody who is asleep from Hyperborea, who they haven't got rid of yet, at the end of the level here, is going to wake up and go, hey, the truth, the truth. And they're going to, they're going to go through and they're going to want to you know, push the truth and find out what it is. Um, so if you go through that, by doing that, they distill the essence of the truth. They find out where the one is because there can only be one so they tell you in the movies um yeah and that's what the truth movement's for I've, I've said to you on my shows it's a fishing exercise how did i know that it is it's a fishing exercise um and that's what they staged 9 11 for they they wanted to find us of course you think that's because they want to keep us in contained in the smart cities no it's not about that at all it's because they're looking for the one you know there's always one in every cycle they tell you in the matrix there's always one in every cycle this is the way it works and so, folks, there's, there's no ego in anything I'm saying here. I'm simply giving you this message because it's extremely important because someone needs to get through the next level. If we, if we don't complete the next level, I, I suspect, you know, it may see the end of, of this realm. And uh, the next level is, is going to be the third world. But anyway, I'm um, getting back to it. Um, there's markers along the way, and, and that's what the truth movement's for. You've got to tell the truth. 
Um, the things that I've done in the truth movement, um, I've always been very analytical. And when I've got things wrong, I've been happy to admit that I was wrong. You know, I've got the cable cars wrong. I don't know whether I've admitted that yet, but yeah, I've got the cable car thing wrong. Um, but these, there's traps. There's all these traps along the way. Um, I've got lots of things wrong, but I've tried to correct those mistakes when I've made them. And something else that I got wrong is, is this isn't a globe. We don't, we're not living on a globe. If anything, we're living on the chest of, 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 of a giant being and we're having war games around its heart and the rest of it's frozen over. I mean, that's a possibility as well. You know, the Mud Fossil University guy is right. Um, uh, Uluru in Australia is, is a heart. It's the heart of whatever it is that we're playing these war games on. Yeah, and the way these parasites work, the way the parasitic mind that, that has taken over this realm works is uh, it, it plays war games using real people. That's how it, it, it does it. And it tells you all in the games it gives you to play as well. It gives you all these war games. Because the, 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 the walk-ins or, or whatever, the, the biological robots that are here who don't know they're robots, these are all the people you can't wake up and you never, will never wake up. And these are all the voices that shout back at you, the bot. A lot of them are bots and some of them are trolls. And the trolls, some of the trolls are actually your friends. They're trying to tell you how to find your way through the game and they're shouting at you to listen to them because you're missing an important piece of the puzzle, which is what the Flat Earthers were doing to me. Um, I was too intent on trying to get myself out of the whole slavery system thing. And it's, just, it's going, the game goes the way the game goes. Um, but the Earth is flat and you're in con a controlled environment. Um, and, and the white genocide thing, I mean, when they, they froze over the first one, the inhabitants escaped. That not, not everybody died. They all got, people got away. They got through. And so part of the game when you're completing the next level is to build the civilization, the game, civilization, build the civilization, and then hunt down those escapees from Hyperborea, which I'm obviously descended from one of those escapees from Hyperborea, because um, that's where the white people came from. So they create the whole concept of rah, 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 rah. Then they make it white genocide, so you can't say anything about it when that's exactly what they're doing. Um, and um, uh, they tell the black people that we were slaves and all that sort of it, All of this is, is, is a fiction. It's their mind. This is how they play the game. You've got to understand, you know, we are all serene and we all live together. And um, there's no need for any of us to be fighting. All of the wars are being fought by them. Um, but they're about to scorch the earth and end this level. And everything's backwards, folks. You know, the, the probably the biggest threat to... Uh, it, it'll be interesting to know that the, the game is actually the two main factions. It's going to come down to the two people who are right in the center of the board, and I think you know who that is. Um, so the only way you can save Palestine, for people who want to save Palestine, the only way you can save Palestine is, I think, to complete this level with a pure heart. And I don't know whether I've done that or not. I've got a sneaking suspicion I've missed my ride, but I want to put that, this out there anyway. But... Um, you've got to tell the truth in everything that you do. It's the only way you can get through the level, folks. And there's signs that are put there for you along the way to give you hints if you're open to them. Um, I've always liked to smoke weed and stuff, but I know now, as much as I've enjoyed it, um, it's kept my mind clouded from noticing all the all the signs that were there that were put for me. Um, for example, when I went to the Free Your Mind conference in the United States. Um, I'd, I'd, all these obstacles had been put in my way. It was a 10 hour trip from, from Peru to Free Your Mind, but it took me 46 hours and I'd been awake for 52 by the time I got there. Then I had to be on stage speaking for, within 45 minutes of arriving. This was all planned for that to happen, to create that obstacle, to make sure I was aware when I did that. I'm at the Free Your Mind conference. Remember that, at the Free Your Mind conference. And the person that introduced me was Sean Young from Blade Runner, the woman who played the replicant in Blade Runner. And there was the guy who was searching for the replicants, you know, because a lot of the people in the world here are, are simply replicants. That's why you can't wake them up and you never will. They're the ones that shout the loudest that you shouldn't listen to people like me. Um, and others are, are parts of the archaic forces, you know, just the, the fodder in the game that you need to play the game. Um, and the interesting thing about that, um, that film was that uh, uh, the guy playing, or was it Harrison Ford, the guy hunting the replicants, fell in love with the replicant. And then he also found out he was a replicant at the end of it. That's an interesting thing. So I don't know where the next level goes, but I don't know what the next move is from this point, folks. This is as far as I've played the game. And like I said, you're going to think I'm nuts, but 
if you hear me out, you might see the importance of this information getting through, you know, because the only way to do this is through a pure heart, pure, having a pure heart. And what, what got me through so I know what the game is now were two major, two major turning points was the Christchurch shooting. When everybody told me I shouldn't be saying what I said, um, I didn't care what anybody thought. I didn't care. I didn't have an income about it. I didn't, I didn't, that's why I've never monetized my account. I want that to get in the way of the truth. I want to find what the truth is. And I've also said also you'll never find what the truth is until you have established the freedom to find out. And uh, that's still to be, still to be determined. So, um, cause there's, this, there's more truth than this yet to, to discover than what I've told you today. But, um, um, I've kind of lost what I was saying. I'm trying to keep this really raw and honest folks. Um, but when, when the Christchurch shooting happened, I didn't care what anybody thought, I just said what was true. And that would have been one of the ticks in the boxes. And then when I put out my Directed Energy Weapons video, I put out the truth as I saw it on my Directed Energy Weapons being used in the fire and, and whether we should, you know, we didn't have any concrete information about this. Um, and that was my focus, because I'm still thinking we've got to find a way of stopping the government from burning our forests down, because I know that's what they're doing. They're murdering our animals and burning our forests. And my mind is focused on that because I'm in the matrix, because I didn't know I was in the game. And then I, I published that video and uh, a channel called A Plain Truth For You um, put up a video containing vital information. He said, how can you, how can you say that not directed at energy weapons and when, when we've got this? And he showed me information that I'd never, ever seen before. And he finished the video with a huge tirade against me. Um, like, really, really gave me a full serving, you know. And um, I put up an apology to him and said I'd be uploading a video soon. And I had this incredible, overwhelming urge that I needed to upload this information, you know. And the fact that I uploaded that information and gave him an apology and I was selfless enough to do that um, was the final thing that they needed. And when the so-called planetary alignment happened the other night, because I had an incredible urge, I was, I, I was parked in in my car here, all these forces stopped, tried to stop me getting that information uploaded, but um, um, I, I, I backed out around all these cars and drove down around the house and around the tree and drove over the steps a bit and did all this stuff just to get out because I had to get in there and get this information uploaded. And um, that night, a bit of after midnight sometime, I had this huge light shine on my head and I had this huge download of, of the whole game and how it works and what's going on here and how it's played in levels. The mind parasites, you know, everybody's, everybody's right to a degree. Um, that's the thing. You've got to look at all the doctrines and be careful what you believe because there's elements of truth in everything. But our belief systems get in the way, but ultimately it's about the truth. And the truth movement has been a fishing exercise to find who could crack the code, who could crack the game. And I've cracked the game because I'm the one who saw the light, you know, I'm the chosen one. I mean, it's, it's sick the way they do this, folks, the way they, they run this. They put all these doctrines in there and you expect all this, this stuff to happen. Um, but the fact is that I think they are waiting for the saviour. And I think had I said the earth is flat on the first video that I uploaded, perhaps I would have gone up in that light that hit my forehead during the so-called planetary alignment. I would have been taken from this realm before it reaches the next level. It's just a thought, I hope I haven't missed my ride, but maybe I have. I have a sneaking suspicion that I have. And I don't know what the next chapter is from this point. I don't know what is next in store for me, um, but I know that my life is now very, very different to what it was last week. Um, another message that I have for you is regarding my name, the name Max Egan. Why did I choose that name? I, I never knew. I mean, it was honour to my, my, my uncle and honour to my son, so there was honour in the choice of the name. But I got hassled by Freemasons, so I was hassled by people saying, oh, 33, 33, you're a Freemason. I'm going, no, I'm not, but you know, they kept hassling me. You know? but it was the clue. These are, these are the people that are trying to, to help you along the way. I'm um, 33, what does it mean? It's the 33rd parallel. That's what the 33 is all about. At the end of this game, they intend to decimate everything above and below the 33rd parallel, north and south. If you want to survive what's coming, you need to get above 
the 33rd parallel if you're in the southern southern regions and you need to get um, below the 33rd parallel in the uh, in the northern regions the rest of it is going to be iced over in their next ice age which i would suggest is due to come i mean i've said to a few times i've said to a few people someone i don't know for some reason the the, the number um, 2022 has come into my mind. You know, 2020, we will get um, uh, 2020 vision, which is what I've just received. And in 2022, I would suspect the cataclysm comes. The Ice Age will come because that's when my passport expires. And with the synchronicities that, uh, you know, because I was thinking about that. When, when I had the number 2022 in my head all the time, I thought, I wonder, I wonder. And I pulled out my passport and it said June 22nd. 2022 that's where my passport expires and i would not be surprised at all if that is the time that the cataclysm happens i don't know just speculation folks but there's been an awful lot of synchronicities in my life now i'd like to thank everybody who's supported me through all this and supported me through this so-called truth movement this fishing exercise whatever they intend to do with me next i have no clue um, i'm just gonna kind of live my life and see where it goes um, but I suspect that I, I may have missed my ride. I suspect I was supposed to say this on the first video, but um, I think if someone does manage to make that ride, they may actually find they can save this entire realm. And that's why it's so important that you, you know, you listen to this, what I've told you today with your heart. Um, listen to the truth of what I've said, because this is exactly what's going on. Um, you may not believe me, but it's simply what I had to tell you. Um, if you can write this information down, download this video and write this information down, don't just write it on paper, write it on leather, write it on something that will last. You know, paper will decompose, that's why they give it to us, you can't keep anything that, that lasts. Um, write it on leather or something and, and move to somewhere above the 33rd parallel. You need to get to high ground above the 33rd parallel. If you can do that, you may be able to save this message and pass it on Keep it very, very safe and pass it on to someone with the purest of hearts that you can find and always make sure to tell them to pass it on. And always tell them that one day they will find someone and they will, they will look at this person and they will know that this is the person they're supposed to give this message to. Um, and I'm not saying that this message was given to me by someone, but I was given a map um, and you know, a key to the map. Um, a book and a key to a map of some, an object that I needed to go and retrieve and I actually haven't had time to retrieve and I suspect I was supposed to retrieve that, achieve, uh, retrieve that object um, before the alignment that happened on Saturday night. And another thing, you know, it's an interesting because I'm not into astrology, I didn't even know the alignment was happening. And I had this incredible thing, I couldn't sleep, I couldn't sleep, I was up and down and up and down, but then I happened to lie in bed and as soon as I lay in bed, I had this huge bright light come through, like literally come through the roof and hit me in the pineal gland. And I had this, I just went, oh my God. And I jumped up and I've been a, a raving lunatic for the last five days. I mean, my friends have been probably thinking I'm going completely insane, but um, it took me that long. It literally took me that long. It's taken me this long to process the information that I received in that download. And the following night after that download, I also saw how the game ends um, that I can't share with you uh, it's just it's just not the place and it's not the time um, so you know all of all of the scenarios that you're given have an element of truth in it but you've got to look for the signs along the way and the key is to tell the truth you know if you tell the truth and all you do with no stake in the outcome don't let monetary uh, stuff get in the way that's another thing they would have looked for who who, who was still telling the, the the truth who had a lot of followers a lot of subscribers but had didn't have a monetized account it's another clue, you know, because I, I, I wasn't into that. I gave all my pensions, all that stuff. I don't want it. I just said, I don't want any of your stuff. And I've done the shows and I've brought the information that I've brought to you purely from the love of the people who've listened to the words and the support they've given me. So all of you have helped in this as well. Um, you know, that's just, this is the way the game is played, folks. I mean, I don't know what else to say. Like I said, you probably think I'm, I'm completely nuts, but... Um, this is how to play the game. If we can get this information through to the next level, then um, someone in the next level can complete the game. And you know, as they tell you in the movies, you know, um, you know, there can be only one. 
They tell us, they tell us all the way down the line, you know, life is just a ride in an amusement park, you know, it's just a ride, you know, um, we've got to get out of this place by the animals, you know, because that's what happens at the end of the level, most of the people that are left turn into animals. Uh, it gets pretty ugly, folks, after the, 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 the scorch earth policy that they run and the wars that they're running, they're going to have a cataclysm within the next two years and it's going to get real ugly. And then you have situations like what Bolsheviks was was created to cover up. That wasn't that was probably the end of a of a, uh, a cataclysm. And you know the mud flood people are right. The um, mud fossil university guy is absolutely correct. Um, kudos to you on on what you've done. And that's absolutely true, folks. That's how it happens. I would suggest it gets lower and lower each time. The, the life forms get smaller and smaller each time as they steal more and more of the resources of the world that they're inhabiting. Whether it's flat, whether it's this, whether it's that, it's, it's irrelevant, you know, the, as far as global, whatever. But this, where we are, is an enclosed realm, and it is flat, and all atmosphere is controlled. All clouds are manufactured. There are no clouds here. They all come from cloud machines that are out there on the ocean. And the video that I've got on after this little uh, rave that I've given you should prove to you, beyond any shadow of a doubt, that this earth is a flat controlled environment and all weather is controlled, all storms are manufactured, all hurricanes are manufactured, all droughts are manufactured, and there's a bunch of parasites in here playing war games with the human race. That's what's going on, folks. We are their puppets and we are also their food. You know, it's a people farm. The people who run this world don't eat what we eat. And I'll, I'll leave it to your imagination to fill in the blanks there. Um, but that's what's going on, folks, and it's imperative that someone gets through the next level. It is, because if I missed my ride last night, then I will suffer the fate of, of all that, that are, uh, you know, everything that, that's about to happen. But I would suggest if you want to survive what's happening, because as in every level, there'll be survivors that go over into the next level, and they will become those who they hunt for um, over the following level, um, who they will look for they'll create the truth movement at the end of that. Um, and I don't know which way that goes, whether that goes to the parasites or whether that goes to the pure force back to the planet, which is what I suggest is what happens. Um, I don't know, because I haven't got to the end of the game. But um, I know all of this sounds crazy, but if we can get this through to the next level and get this information through to whoever completes the next level, um, as, as they always say, um, there can be only one. And after that, well... As Jim Morrison said, no one here gets out alive. So that's what I had to share with you folks. Um, thank you to all the people who've supported me through all this. Thank you on Patreon and all, all of this. I mean, I've, I've really, I couldn't have done it. I could have completed the game without any of your support. And I didn't know I was even playing a game or completing a game. I didn't know any of the information that I brought you today until that light shone on me on Saturday night. And that's the thing, because all the stuff that I've brought you through that has been irrelevant. It's simply being the, the parasites getting all those aha moments. But then they brought the real event out, the real truth, and that was Christchurch. Christchurch. Why is it that name, Christchurch? Because you had to tell the truth on that event. When you see something like that and everyone else is telling you it's fake, you've got to tell the truth, folks. And then when someone abuses you like all hell because you're not paying attention to what they're listening to, you have to forgive them and you have to share what they've told you because that shows you have a pure heart and it shows forgiveness and it shows compassion and it shows all the things that are needed to be channeled into that, that white light that needs to go back up there and hit that solar wind that is apparently coming in tonight, all this stuff I didn't know about. And, you know, and that, that's another thing that gels it for me is that I'm not into astrology. I didn't even know about the, the lineup. I didn't even know it was happening. But a lot of forces made sure I was lying in that bed. And when I look at this place that I live in, I never lived in here before. I, I was living in a place in Byron Bay and I had to move out. And we were given three months notice and I, I just didn't bother looking for anywhere. Two weeks before it was time's up, I thought, well, I better get a place. Put a post on Facebook and said, hey, need a room. Has anyone got one? And a guy contacted me privately and said, I got this shed. And I come up here and I opened the door and I walked in and I looked at the wall and there's crows in the mural up on the wall there. And I'm thinking, I don't know if I want to live in Queensland, you know. And uh, I've walked in, I've looked at the wall, and I went, oh, it's the crow house. I'll take it. And if I hadn't have done that, if I judged, oh, it's a shed, and I don't want to be in Queensland, and I was hoity-toity about it, I didn't want to live in a shed, whatever, you know, um, I never would have been lying in that bed. So when people gift you things from the purest of their heart, the, the man who owns this place has a very, very pure heart, 
when someone from the pure pureness of their heart gifts you something, it's valuable. There's a meaning for that. There's a meaning in, in everything. You know, all these major things, these life-changing things, there's meaning in all of it. And you know, how you are judged and, and how um, it all works is, is how you interact within this realm while you're in it. You know, all the spirit cooking and all of that sort of stuff. People think, oh, that's the ceremonies they have. No, it's, it's this. It's this life that you are in right now is, is the cooking of your spirit. Um, you've got to get through. You've got to get through it. Um, they give you all the temptations along the way. Everything you need to mess yourself up. You can go and abuse women. You can go and get into all this bad stuff that you got into. You know, um, you can, you know, maybe think it, but, but don't do it. Because you're always going to want to think it because that's their mind. You know, that's their mind telling you. And if people say, oh, no, I always think those dark thoughts. How could you think that? These are usually biological robots, I would suggest. They don't have those thoughts. So they're not going to understand at all what you're talking about. The, the, the way to get through it is, is, is in yourself. The answers don't lie in anybody else, they only lie in yourself. And the most important thing is to always tell the truth in what you see. If you don't know for sure, don't claim it is to be truth. And that's why I've never made any claims on the show. Um, I only made one claim, and that was I claimed that there were no, uh, it was not a hoax at Christchurch. And everyone said to me, this is the first time you've ever made a claim, why are you making the claim, you know? And I made the claim because it was the truth. And then also, um, um, I apologized to Jamie and I opened my heart to him when he abused me. And I showed compassion, and I showed forgiveness, and I showed respect for his anger, which was, was rightly deserved on my part. So um, that's how to get through the game, folks. And I don't know what happens after this point. I don't know whether I miss my ride or whether I get a little little leeway thing. I, I, don't, know what, I don't know what happens from here. I don't know whether you hear from me again. I don't, I don't know what happens. Uh, I don't know what the next move is. Uh, I, I, I guess I'm probably going to be around and you'll hear from me again. I do want to upload another video as well because I want to tell you my real name. Um, I'm not going to do it on this video and there's a reason for that. And you'll know what that reason is uh, as soon as I upload the next video. But um, everything that I've told you today is extremely important. Uh, as I said, I think this is the most important um, message I've ever delivered. Thank you, thank you to the people who've supported me through all this with their funding, through, through all of that. I'd, I'd really appreciate it if you could support me through this next stage, whatever it's going to be. Um, but hey, folks, it was the truth movement, and the truth is the earth is flat. So make of it what you will, um, but I love you all. And, and what's actually going to follow after this talk should show without any shadow of a doubt that this whole war and this whole climate change scam is being completely manufactured it's all been done by design it's been a pleasure my friends in la cash we can bring in the oceanic rain and we need to be conscious it's not about delivering rain on land it's about nurturing a rain system that can promote agriculture and protect the people involved so in all cases, we want to make sure we don't get flooding, but we can deliver timely rain in a gentle, soaking manner into our agricultural targets. Technology relies on a signal that, we, that we're able to generate that um, triggers a response from atmospheric patterns. So we're able to observe this using satellite meteorology, extensively available now to everyone who's got access to broadband internet. But we're able to um, utilize that signal set in sequence to generate a um, incremental deviation in the flow path of these oceanic atmospheric rivers. So the source is the ocean, of course. The vapor, um, precipitable moisture flow is in the atmosphere. The winds drive this with the pressure systems adjusting the path of least resistance. But our technology is able to interface that and hack into it, if you like, and make some micro-adjustments to allow deviations to occur in the flow pathways. And this is how we broke the drought in Australia in 2005. This is how we put out the fires in Victoria from Black Saturday in 2009. This is how we delivered rain in the desert in Saudi Arabia in 2007 and snow for the first time in history in 2004 in the United Arab Emirates. 
There's been other projects above the radar and some under the radar, but today for the first time we're putting our hand up in front of the media to say this is available. We're going to run this project here to break the drought in the Horn of Africa. We're meeting with cabinet, uh, federal cabinet for Kenya and the Prime Minister and other parties and authorities in the region. We've met extensively with United Nations teams and agencies and we're planning to do this in the most careful manner. Firstly, to bring some general rain in to give food for the, crop, uh, food for the cattle and the livestock so milk can be produced, so the human survivability can go up. Once that survivability has gone up, then we can look at more substantial rains that can be suitable for crop. What is this technology? Uh, technology. Uh, essentially, we're drawing oceanic rain systems that exist over the oceans into geographic targets, into our agricultural areas. Um, the technology uses electromagnetics, so we're not interfering with the atmosphere or with the environment. We're not damaging it. We're not using chemicals fired through rockets like other technologies use. We use a, a very um, gentle but powerful technology launching electromagnetics into the atmosphere mm -hmm to modify the flow of the weather system over the ocean and drawing it into a target. So, so if for any of you that still doubt the weather is being modified on a grand scale, on a regular basis, all over the world, just go to this website called weathermodification.com, Weather Modification Inc. We see potential. When most people look up, they see clouds. No, I see you geoengineering, spraying us like drugs and ruining the future for all life is what I see, you scumbags that are knowingly doing this. They're out of uh, North Dakota here. And if you tick on their clients and projects list, it's no small group that they're doing this through. Look at all the countries from A to Z where they have precipitation, meteorological spraying, geoengineered weather, that they're conducting and look at Cal and look at the United States. Look at all the areas, Nevada, Edwards Face, North Dakota, Oklahoma, Santa Barbara, Sonoma Technology Inc. Huh, you think you guys had a hand in the directed energy weapons attacks? Well, maybe we should go visit you and find out for ourselves. All of you that work for these companies and are staying silent and, and, and allowing this to happen, shame. Shame on you all. But here's the evidence, folks. You can't, you know, they use the weather to steer it with the next rad radar systems. They, they, they call it NOAA for a reason. You know, National Oceanic Administration, NOAA, get it, the floods, you know. They play games with us. And they have the radar systems. They have the aircraft. They have the hidden technology. Oh, built for success. No, built for aerosol spraying us like freaking bugs. And they also have VIP transports, photographic equipment. This is all being funded by the government that's acknowledging and helping and uh, providing for the money for uh, them to spray us like bugs and to manipulate the weather at will and to create the directed energy attacks. These are the companies that are involved with it all. They park out in the oceans and they use the ocean water, as you heard him testify, using the ocean's water to create the water vapors and then use the barium in the, in the aluminum particles to steer the weather and create the rain if they want or the drought if they want. This is all part of the Bill Gates from hell funding to spray us like bugs to control the weather and manipulate at will for their agenda. Can you remain silent while all this is happening? Here's a piece I did on the silver lining project with the former weather wars. Don't know what happened to him. But this explains it a little further about the Silver Lining Project and how it operates off the West Coast back in 2017. Three to five inches, guys, in a, such a short period of time, there is going to be more flooding and more, much more damage. As always, the simple and logical question is, how can this be? How can so much rain fall in such a short amount of time? Long-time Weather War 101 viewers already know the answer to that question, and it isn't an atmospheric river stretching from Hawaii. Meantime, out west, stretching all the way from Hawaii into the west coast, we've got this Pineapple Express. We are watching this round of powerful new storms making their way into California with even more heavy rains and high winds. 
Why are meteorologists okay with repeatedly saying this water vapor is streaming from the island of Hawaii with no natural explanation for why that would be? Why would the island of Hawaii be providing this water vapor instead of the whole of the Pacific Ocean? Here's one very tangible reason for why that would be. A massive geothermal power plant with huge banks of fans capable of blowing tremendous amounts of water vapor into the air. This plant is conveniently located precisely at the beginning of the so-called atmospheric river. The Hawaiian Puna geothermal plant is exactly like the Californian geothermal plants, like Casa Diablo, that fuel the water vapor mass when it reaches the coast. Why can't meteorologists see with their own eyes that the so-called atmospheric river abruptly originates from the island of Hawaii but is fueled by other equally inexplicable sudden streams of water vapor? Why can't meteorologists see that when this artificially created water vapor stream reaches the coast of California, bursts of water vapor erupt from all over the state to complete the storm system and create the otherwise inexplicable deluge California is currently experiencing? For years, Weather War 101 has explained why geoengineers have such difficulty getting it to rain in California. This system depends on sequential water vapor generation from one state to the next, adding to storm systems until saturation point is reached. California, being at the beginning of this nationwide cycle, has no states before it to bring storm systems to saturation. Since there are far fewer water vapor generators in the Pacific than there are on land, sufficient water vapor to tip saturation point rarely reaches California. However, Recent evident increases of the number of water vapor generators in the Pacific have produced enough water vapor concentration on several instances for the on-land water vapor generators to push them past saturation. This is the verifiable sequence of events that produces these rare rainstorms in California and it is the verifiable sequence of the current storm as well. Here we see streams of water vapor burst from nowhere as if from a fire hose. In fact, in the perpetual effort to numb the public to reality, fire hose is quite often exactly how they refer to it. Here we see more streams. Here we see even more streams. These streams are intended to combine and bring near saturation water vapor mass to California where it can be tipped to force rain. These streams are clearly not the result of slow evaporation from the sun. Clearly, this rapid water vapor generation comes from fixed sources in the Pacific Ocean. The most definitive way to show deliberate intent is to show the on-land water vapor generation streams that are intended to push the incoming water vapor past saturation point. Observing this, proves the coordination and deliberate intent to make it rain and once you understand the process you can witness it with any storm on the planet.
Here we see streams of water vapor generation in advance of the incoming water vapor mass. Once again, in 2017, this is the only way storm systems happen, and it's the reason that when it does rain, it comes down in deluge. While the social media bot networks misdirect and shift focus to Governor Jerry Brown failing to upgrade the emergency spillway, the real question people need to be asking is, where did all of this water suddenly come from after four years of severe drought? No rational person would blame the governor for not upgrading an emergency spillway during extreme drought unless they were aware of the capacity to create sudden overwhelming events like this. Upgrading an emergency spillway during extreme drought would be like demanding snow tires. Three to five inches, guys, in a, such a short period of time, there is going to be more flooding and more, much more damage. As always, the simple and logical question is how...